up his mother, too. What a day, this... Tom was born here in Whitless Bay on the Atlantic coast of Newfoundland. He spent his whole life, ten years, living within sight of Green Island, but he's never been on it. Tom is very interested in birds. He's read every book he could find about them, looked at pictures, because he's always wanted to go to Green Island, and it's a bird sanctuary. He's been out around the island just once when he was five years old and he's never been able to forget it. His father was alive then. He took young Tom out in his fishing boat. The sea was too rough, but the birds were all around them. Someday, when he grew up, he'd go back to Green Island and... But here's Uncle Steve, right on time. Steve Milligan works for the Canadian Wildlife Service. Part of his job is to put leg bands on some of the birds that come back every year to the same nests on Green Island. He promised that today he'd take Tom along, too. <coughs> Uncle Steve's boss, Mr. Moore, thinks Green Island is too dangerous for children. And anyway, you shouldn't take kids on a field trip. Keep that kid sitting down! Tom, don't stand up in the boat. diving for fish. Some of them eat so much, they're too heavy to fly. And at last, Green Island. projection of rock, nests with loud, hungry baby birds. The gulls keep circling overhead. They don't like having people around. Getting to the top isn't easy, and Mr. Moore wants to get on with the work. But Tom is feeling the strangeness of the island. This broken crag of rock with sheer cliffs on every side was never intended for human beings. One false step anywhere and you'd start rolling right back down into the sea. Tom thought,
thought the top of the island would be easier to walk on, but it isn't. The grass grows in long tufts with a two-foot drop between. The other side of the island is Puffin Country, the largest colony in Newfoundland. Their nests are tunnels burrowed two or three feet into the ground. Steve has to use gloves to hold a puffin. Their beaks are strong enough to break open clams and oysters. Puffins are clumsy flyers, but wonderful swimmers. They use their wings for swimming, really flying underwater. Perhaps the most graceful of all birds, gulls, can lie on the wind for hours. The largest of them are called herring gulls. While people are around, they stay overhead to keep an eye on their children. The little ones are always hungry. Time to get to work. A few young birds of each kind must be banded so their habits and travels can be studied. The zinc bands have information engraved on them. When a fisherman in any country finds a bird with a band on its leg, he mails the band back to the address that's written on it. By this means, each country can make a study of its bird life. The band is loose, so it won't interfere with the bird's growth. There are a lot of nests on the cliffs that Steve and Mr. Moore can get to only by climbing down on a rope. Mr. Moore won't let Tom go with them. He says it's too dangerous for a small boy. So Tom will be alone until they get back. himself, Tom has found a razor-billed auk. It's too bad Steve isn't here to see it. They're not very plentiful. The Murs are a friendly bunch. In Newfoundland, they're called Turs. Like little penguins, they go right on with their daily chores as if Tom weren't there. right in their midst start arguing about who owns that rock. Kittawakes are smaller than herring gulls and great travelers. Leg bands that were put on here at Green Island 
have been sent back from Denmark and Russia. Kidawakes like to soar out over the water. They swing back and forth with the rhythm of the wind. Suddenly, there is panic among the birds. And no wonder, it's a raven. A raven is seldom brave enough to try and steal young birds from such a large colony. The murres won't attack it directly, but their very numbers frighten the raven away. beginning to wonder what's become of Uncle Steve and Mr. Moore. They've been gone a long time. Tom. When Steve was climbing down, the rope slipped off the rock it's lucky he was close to the bottom. Now Mr. Moore is stranded on the cliffs. The rope fell with Steve. Now there's no way for Mr. Moore to get down. Tom wants to go, taking the rope to Mr. Moore along a narrow ledge in the cliff. He thinks he can do it easily. He's smaller and lighter than Steve. Steve is not sure he should let Tom go, but there isn't any other way. And Tom really wants to try it. Exploring. 